Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and while I know there are plenty of other news stories I could be discussing right now, like the writer of the Witcher novels threatening legal action against CD Projekt Red if he doesn't get more money, but to be honest, when I feel passionate about a subject, I do want to maintain the freedom to be able to talk about that subject unfettered and to be able to offer my full commentary and critique on the matter, whether it be on a video game, on the actions of a games developer or publisher, or when I see something that I deem to be a detriment to the games industry. That latter part is, of course, going to be the primary focus of tonight's video, and I'll tell you why. When I see a game's critique that, even in its brevity, shows several glaring issues with a AAA title from a news source that, as much as it might be derided by myself and many others, is a trusted source of information for many people, where that source that lists said issues glosses over those issues and tries to spin them as a good thing in order to render a positive critique, I end up feeling that little nugget of rage start to bubble up from the dark void that is my soul. The reason why is that while I don't produce as many reviews as I would like, mostly due to a lack of time, I am still very much a critic at heart, and part of that critic's soul, as it were, entails a desire for consumer advocacy and awareness. And when I see a critique being delivered in what I deem to be a duplicitous fashion, I feel compelled to say or do something about it. Of course, in this case, I'm talking about Polygon and Ben Kuchera. Now, before I delve into this too deeply, I do want to make sure that the facts that we're dealing with are presented to you in as unbiased a fashion as possible, as always. So I will present what I feel to be the pertinent details to you, and then I will provide my opinion based on those facts provided. Links to any sources used will be down in the description below, so if anyone is concerned that I might be misrepresenting the review in question, I would urge you to go read the review in its entirety yourself. I will also post an archive.is link for those of you that hold a moral compunction against giving Polygon clicks because I know that there will be at least a few of you that will be thinking that. In addition, links to my social media, Discord, and Patreon are in the description down below. Now, in the Polygon review, or initial impression, however you want to spin it, of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Ben Kuchera made the following statements. After three hours of gameplay, he still felt lost within the game. He was unable to grasp the pacing of the game, nor how the different gameplay components would tie together. Kuchera also stated that the gameplay mechanics were not being delivered in a coherent fashion. After that three hours of gameplay, Kuchera realized he was still playing the introduction, which was made evident by the title screen finally showing up. He also stated the game included multiple false starts, and that finally after about 10 hours in, he was beginning to get comfortable with the game before another entirely new gameplay system was dumped into his lap. Kuchera then stated that these disjointed mechanics and what would seem to be a poor delivery of gameplay mechanics to the player impressed him, stating that it is rare for a non-JRPG game to take this long to open up. And then he stated that after a full 15 hours, the game and all of its disparate mechanics were finally beginning to make sense to him. Kuchera's final statement is one of optimistic positivity, endorsing the game in spite of all the very obvious flaws. Now, in regards to that, I would also like to point out the Forbes review of the game by Paul Tassi, in which he stated he was able to complete the game after 55 hours of gameplay. This means that the 15 hours that it took Kuchera before he was able to find the fun amounted to approximately one-third of the entire game. Now, one last thing I do want to make note of before we dive into things fully here. Of course, this is not a full or comprehensive review. It is, or at least seems to be, an impression of what one could reasonably assume to be the first third of the game, which would be more than enough time to render a proper critique on the game and its mechanics. Now, first, I want to give credit where credit is due in some regard. Kuchera is not wrong in the slightest to point out you don't see very many games outside of a JRPG that takes that long of a time before all of the game mechanics are introduced. Now, I recall the game Tales of Berseria and how after 12 hours in, the game was still introducing more game mechanics to me, which I have too found pleasantly surprising, but there were some marked differences there between Tales of Berseria and Assassin's Creed that we'll get into here in just a second. Now, overall, Ben Kuchera's critique of Assassin's Creed could be refined to the following points. The introduction of the game is exceptionally long, to the tune of approximately three full hours of gameplay, which actually could be taken as a promising sign of a game with a large amount of content on offer. Uh, through the course of that introduction, the game does not do a good job at delivering the game's mechanics to the player, and it also does a poor job with letting the player feel comfortable with those game mechanics. 
The game's design left the critic in question, feeling that the game was disjointed and incoherent. That lack of cohesion lasted for a significant portion of the overall game, and the critic somehow thought this was a good thing. And I'm here to tell you, dear viewer, that this is very far from what the truth should be. You see, I brought up Tales of Berseria for a reason. It was a very large game with a ton of content that also was still introducing new game mechanics like I said after 12 hours in. But during those 12 hours of gameplay, I found Tales of Berseria to be interesting, engaging, well thought out, well designed, with engaging characters and story, and well thought out and well delivered game mechanics that made sense. Never once did I feel at a loss for what to do, where, or why. That, I think, is the hallmark of good game design. Where yes, it might take a very long time for the game to completely open up, but Tales of Berseria holds the player's interest and keeps the game fun during that time. And from what we could see from Ben Kuchera's critique of Odyssey, Ubisoft was not capable of doing that. And if you have to play a game for 15 hours before the game makes sense or for the game to finally become enjoyable, that is either a case of terrible game design, a simple lack of comprehension, straight up Stockholm Syndrome, or some form of combination of any of those possibilities. This is a game. It is a source of entertainment. It should never take 15 hours to finally become interesting or enjoyable. That is the equivalent of saying you have to watch The Last Jedi seven times before you're allowed to watch The Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. It's beyond ridiculous, and for a game's critic to still offer a game praise after punishing themselves for 15 hours strikes me as being both misrepresentative of the information related and intellectually dishonest. Critique is important. While some game developers see critics and pundits to be leeches on the industry, critics do serve a vital and necessary function within the games industry. Critics are, if nothing else, conduits of information for the average gamer or consumer. Critics help curb the excesses of the games industry by providing information that is ideally not filtered through the lens of the publishers or developers who are creating or promoting the game in question. Without critics, without Let's Plays, without streamers, without those conduits of information, all we are left with is the information that those developers and publishers choose to disclose. And that is the world of hype. It is the world of The Order 1886, the world of Destiny 2, the world of No Man's Sky when it launched, the world of Aliens Colonial Marines, and the world of Star Wars Battlefront EA 1 and 2. It is an industry ultimately based on dishonesty, spin, and hype. Critique, real critique, helps to combat such things by being able to provide unfarnished facts and opinions that haven't been colored by the lens of the fanboy. Ben Kuchera in this article has ultimately failed as a critic in my eyes. I'm sure some others will take it differently, and realistically, there's nothing wrong with that. Critique is ultimately a subjective thing. It is an opinion of the critic based on their own experiences and personal preferences. Ben Kuchera is obviously a person that has no problem slogging through 15 hours of unenjoyable and disjointed gameplay in order to finally find the fun. However, critics to my mind at least, must always keep in the back of their mind what is best for their readers or their viewers. You are the people who matter the most, not the developers, not the publishers, and certainly not me. A critic must also ask, is this good for the consumer? Is this good for my viewers? If the answer to that is no, then you have no right issuing a positive critique, especially while listing so many negatives in the doing. At least, to give Ben some credit, he bothered to point out the myriad negatives before issuing his positive endorsement of the game, but in the doing so, he failed his readers. 15 hours to finally reach a point where the game is enjoyable is deplorable, and it sends huge amounts of red flags both in regards to Ben Kuchera and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, I haven't played the game. I was not granted access to the title, so I'll be getting my first look at the release date, mostly because I do have to buy these games and take a look at them. So I will invest my own 15 hours of gameplay and I will report back my own findings on this. God knows this industry could use some actual honesty in its game critique. After Ben Kuchera's insult of a critique, I would say it's more sorely needed than ever before. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.